How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Mother Sponge 5000 and of course in this video we're going to focus on Invest 95L and the good news is, is that compared to yesterday we're seeing a lot less convective activity surrounding the center of circulation which is good news because of course um, tropical cyclones or at least tropical waves need a little bit more convective activity for the pressure to lower as well as the wind speed to increase and now that we're seeing less convective activity that definitely diminish, um, diminishes the chance at least in the near future that we're going to see this develop into a tropical depression it is dealing with a decent amount of dry air just to the north of it this was forecasted to be one of the main inhibiting factors as this tropical wave continued to head further westward and we're definitely going to need to pay, keep an eye on the how much dry air exists just to the north of it to, to determine if we're going to see enough convective activity for this to develop into a tropical cyclone and this is a primary reason why the national hurricane center at least for today has um lowered its chance of this developing into a tropical cyclone just by a little bit because it we're definitely seeing a lot less convective activity compared to yesterday however i'll still say that more likely than not we will at least see a tropical cyclone develop out of this tropical wave despite the fact that we're seeing less convective activity than usual however i wouldn't be surprised if, if the dry air just becomes a little bit too much for this tropical storm to handle Here's the National Hurricane Center's new forecast regarding the chance that this will develop into a tropical storm. And we do see that the chance has lowered by around 10% um, um, for both the next 48 hours as well as the next 7 days. Where the chance for the next 7 days has reduced from 70% down to 60% and 50% down to 40% over the next 48 hours. However, this still means... The chance is closer to a moderate chance now that this develops into Tropical Storm Emily as it approaches the Windward Islands. But even if this doesn't develop into a Tropical Storm, you still could experience Tropical Storm-like impacts because it is still a fairly powerful Tropical Wave. You still could experience heavier um, amounts of rainfall as well as gustier winds, rough surf along the coast, whether this develops or not. However, the best case scenario, of course, would that um, would be that this storm wouldn't develop into tropical storm status. It will only impact you guys as a tropical wave. And what's interesting is that taking a look a little bit further northward, we now have our first hurricane of the hurricane season, Hurricane Dawn, which is now which now has maximum sustained winds of. 75 miles per hour with its central millibar pressure right around 988 millibars the good news is however is that it's not expected to impact land and hopefully that remains the case for a lot of the next potential few tropical cyclones that move through the atlantic it's still um, way it's of course way too uncertain to save um but that's only the hope that we see less tropical cyclones impact land just like what we're expected to see with hurricane dawn but for this next tropical wave it is more likely to impact land whether this develops a chop it, well it's pretty much guaranteed at this point it should impact at least the leeward and windward islands with tropical storm force impacts so you definitely need to prepare accordingly in those areas in terms of what the latest runs of the most reliable computer models are saying, such as the GFS model, we still do see the GFS model is taking a very similar scenario compared to yesterday, where it mainly makes the storm remain as a weak tropical storm to potentially not even reaching tropical storm status as dry air just becomes a lot too much for this storm system to handle as the GFS model is leaning a little bit more to this hovering around tropical storm status, maybe slightly below or maybe slightly above tropical storm status. But regardless, the leeward and windward islands still experience heavy rainfall from this. So you still need to pay close attention to this. And we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to really the amount of dry air that will move just to the west of this storm system. The primary reason why the GFS model isn't very confident that this storm system will develop very rapidly is due to the fact that there's plenty of dry air just to the west of this storm system that will stabilize the air mass surrounding the center circulation and that will increase the pressure and reduce the wind speed for this to potentially reach a very strong category um, when it comes to wind speed as most likely we're gonna see a weak tropical storm from this and it should 
bring impacts to the windward and leeward islands and beyond that maybe enhanced rainfall in some of the caribbean islands such as hispaniola jamaica cuba and puerto rico those areas could experience an enhanced amount of rainfall even if you aren't directly impacted by the center of circulation but by that point the storm shouldn't be considered tropical storm status as the wind shear will increase dramatically but the thing that is concerning at least early on is that the wind shear should remain relatively light for the most part one of the things that's definitely been i'll say the main factor that's been increasing the chance that this could develop into a tropical cyclone is the lack of wind shear over this storm system this is very favorable for tropical cyclone development um, really the only main inhibitor is the amount of dry air we do see that the wind shear is very light hovering between five to ten knots and that's definitely more than enough for a tropical cyclone to develop under those conditions if all the other conditions also satisfy the prerequisites such as the uh, higher amount of humidity but in this case it seems like the dry air will be the main inhibiting factor but if this storm is somehow able to gain a little bit more moisture and avoid the dry air like it was doing yesterday then we could see potentially a stronger tropical storm um, approach the windward and leeward islands but it just seems like ba especially based on what we're seeing today with how the storm is struggling especially compared to yesterday um, uh, um, regarding the amount of convective activity surrounding it I'll say that it's less likely that we're going to see this develop into a tropical storm the most likely scenario at this point is either we see a weak tropical storm which hovers anywhere between 40 to 50 miles per hour by the time this approaches the Caribbean or uh or a storm system that falls just below tropical storm status maybe it peaks out at tropical depression status or even less than that where it's just a regular tropical wave that approaches the caribbean um so we're definitely gonna need to, need to pay very close attention to the most part for the amount of dry air just to the north of it because it seems like the wind shear at least early on will be favorable for tropical cyclone development it will change once this approaches the caribbean we see that the wind shear definitely enhances and that's why i do believe that if this storm system wants to have a good chance of developing it it'll need to do it early on i'll say just before it approaches windward and leeward islands or maybe a little bit after that and pretty much not anywhere further than the longitude of puerto rico because if it were to move pa past the puerto rico area that's when the wind shear should become way too strong for this tropical cyclone to have any good chance of developing um so um it's definitely going to need to develop very early on it if it wants to develop into a tropical storm and that really all depends on the amount of dry air the European model is forecasting a very similar um, trajectory as well as strength um, as the storm continues ahead further westward. We do see that it moves at a very similar trajectory as the GFS model. It stays hovering around um, strong tropical wave to weak tropical storm status as it approaches the windward islands. And we st see a similar amount of dry air between both of the computer models. The European model is expecting a even less convection, which is typical um, compared to the GFS model. So it makes me a little bit more confident that most likely that we're going to see a weak tropical storm approach this area. It seems like the dry air is going to be too much for this storm to peak out any more than weak tropical storm status. I don't think is um i think it's just unlikely it's gonna reach let's say 70 miles per hour borderline hurricane status just because there's too much dry air despite the lack of wind shear over this storm system but regardless expect heavy rainfall and gusty winds throughout the windward and leeward islands but what's interesting is that the track will be key as well because while the GFS model wants to take this storm further northward to where it brings enhanced, an enhanced amount of rainfall over Hispaniola, Cuba, Jamaica, and Puerto Rico, the European model takes a track a lot further southward to where it mainly impacts the windward islands more directly, um, and it brings us impacts to the leeward islands and the lesser Antilles, while Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, and Cuba they don't experience rainfall at all from this tropical um, cyclone or tropical wave whatever this entity is by the time it approaches you guys in longitude so 
it's definitely going to be interesting. We're going to need to pay close attention to how strong this ridge will be. The stronger the ridge will be, of course, the further southward it moves. The GFS model is expecting a weaker ridge. So we're seeing that rain and heavy and moisture move a little bit further northwards where you guys experience impact. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this ridge will build over the next several days. Pay very close attention to how the computer models shift their forecast. But what I could say for certain is that the windward islands especially should experience direct impacts when it comes to heavy rainfall and gusty winds um, regardless of the strength so as the lesser antilles so you definitely want to prepare accordingly in those areas so this is uh, going to be one of the main catalysts that will create a very stable environment over this storm system as it continues ahead further westward. It's the amount of Saharan dust that's located in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And the problem tropical waves have with Saharan dust is that if there's a high amount of uh, Saharan dust, that creates a temperature inversion in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, which means that the warm and moist air mass located around the surface is cooler than the air mass or the Saharan air layer that's right above it. And of course, since cool, since a cooler air mass sinks when it's surrounded by a warmer air mass like the Saharan dust, that means that the, more, the warm and moist air mass located along the surface isn't able to rise up because it's cooler than the Saharan dust right above it. So we see less convection, less say in heat develop, and of course that stabilizes the, the atmosphere in general over the main development region. And we do see that over the next several days. The Saharan dust is expected to stick around. I don't think it's going to be a very high concentration of Saharan dust. Uh, or at least high enough to completely fizzle out this storm. This storm still could have a ch um, could have a good chance of developing into a tropical storm. I still do believe that we're more likely going to see a tropical storm even under with this Saharan dust, but it definitely will reduce its chances as the storm continues ahead further westward. But still expect pretty significant tropical storm impacts along the windward and leeward islands. And here are what the current ensemble members are stating at this time. We do see that most of the ensemble members do take it southward, directly impacting the windward islands rather than the lesser Antilles. And we do see that some do want to take a shift further northward. I definitely wouldn't rule out the chance that Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Haiti experiences enhanced rainfall from this tropical wave or storm, depending on what strength it is by the time it approaches you guys. So you still need to watch out along the bigger Caribbean islands as well for potential impacts, especially as we approach next week. And here's the model intensity guidance, and we do see that majority of them do take it to, at least to tropical storm status. We do have the outliers taking it to hurricane status. I definitely don't, I definitely take that with a huge grain of salt. I don't think that there's going to be enough of an unstable environment over the or over the rest of the main development region for that to be a possibility. So I'll say that more likely we're going to see a tropical storm develop out of this tropical wave. Um, we do have some that don't develop it to tropical storm status. I definitely wouldn't rule out that possibility either um, because like I said, there's plenty of dry air that could be a huge inhibiting factor, but I'll say that we're more likely still going to experience a tropical storm. And here's my overall forecast when it comes to potential tropical storm Emily. I still think it's likely. I still think that the windward islands will likely experience tropical storm impacts. And for the bigger Caribbean islands, you need to pay close attention to that possibility that maybe this could shift a little bit for north or bring a little bit more rain for you guys and could enhance the possibility of flooding. So keep that in mind along the bitter, bigger Caribbean islands as we approach next week. But that's it for now, guys. And I thank you guys for watching. And make sure to like this video if you do enjoy it. And make sure to subscribe for more hurricane season updates.